This is Adventist World Radio Ghana. Voice of Hope. This is Daylight Magazine, and under this segment we have Reflections, Youth Corner, and Moment of Truth. I am Kojo Ansedu, and I'm presenting this with Hannah B. Nyakum. How are you doing today, Hannah? I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing well as well. I hope, dear listener, you enjoy our programs. Stay tuned. a mirror image. I hope you do. Come join me as we take a purposeful contemplation of our lives. This is the program Reflection. My dear listener out there, this is Jocelyn Ahipo. Do you know that one day God is going to return? As a matter of fact, you know that Jesus Christ is going to return one day. He's going to return here on earth. He's going to come for you and I. Are you prepared to meet him? How best are you using your time? How best are you using your time? Time is taken away. There are only 800,760 hours in each year. Nearly half of that time is spent sleeping, eating and commenting to and from work. The average job consumes another 2,080 hours, leaving only a quarter of the year for everything else. How are you using your time when your life is coming to an end? How will you see your life in light, moral and spiritual issues? What good did you receive from the things you did? All you have to show for them is your shame, and they lead to death. Sin pays off with death, but God's gift is eternal life, given by Jesus Christ our Lord. Time is taken away. Don't waste yours. My dear listener, don't waste your time at all. Do something. 
get yourself occupied, read a book, do a trade. Thank you. This segment is about the youth and their lives in today's world. The program is Youth Corner. They must lay beneath the barren sky. Leave it to me, I lead you on. So afraid that you will not be found. It won't be long before your sun goes down. Leave it to me, I lead you on. Welcome, precious listener. This is Albert Otinti, your host. This is the Youth Corner, and with me at the studio to discuss. Very interesting topics today are Rafael Edijan, Hilda Ataja, David Amable. Panel, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, now we have so many questions bothering our minds. Is a special time in one's life? Is it a stage everyone goes through? Do we all go through this phase of life? How wonderful is this experience? The youth this stage, who is the youth? Who can be considered as a youth? Well, I would say that the youth is any person between the age of teenage and then adulthood. We can have the youth age span from somewhere 17 to 30. I'm saying 17 to 30 depending on the geographical area of a group of people or a chosen settlement. I'm saying this because when you move outside Africa, let's say in the United States, you have the youth span from way down to 13 or 12 up to somewhere 27 where they may cut you off due to their way of living. But when you come down to Africa, let's say to Ghana, we can say that way from 17 up to 30, we will say someone is a youth. I'm saying so because in the African setting, one is figured to be growing. That is when the person is about to leave adolescence. So we say that someone at the age of 17 going to 18 is being considered to be matured in his thinking and the way he or she acts. Okay, that's so interesting. Talking about geographical setting, Miss Hilda Ataja, what do you make of that? Who is considered as the youth by you? As my brother Raphael said, the youth to me, I also think that it's the early part or a stage in the growth of life of every human being. And I'm saying that because there are certain classes of people who believe that the youth, sometimes our age, could be higher, maybe in, in terms of the 20s, but we still behave either maturely or below the maturity stage or even below the adolescent stage. So, does it mean that um, placing people in that group has something to do with maturity or age. Do they have things in common? Age, yes. maturity? Yes, they have things in common. In terms of with well, every normal human being, when you go in and you get to the adolescent stage, you begin to have certain kind of features or characteristics. And looking worldwide, Almost many people do have such kind of characteristics. But most of the times, those characteristics do not show the real maturity of the normal human being. People okay. could come up with such characteristics, although, but they still think lower than those kind of characteristics. Okay. And what about you, David? Um, I would classify you the youth you? between the ages of 19 and 35. The 19, between 19 and 35, I would say they are the youth of today because 
they are expected to think maturely and you know do things that young adults should do a youth should be a young adult if you are about 12 to 19 i'd say you are still a teenager probably be in sss or coming out of sss by age 18 and so therefore you might not have faced too many hardships in life but 19 to 35 you should have some experience in life that that should give you a certain level of thinking you know that should make you matured in the things you do and what you say and how you think oh so you're also bringing in experience talking about age and experience so we're going to touch on all those now having exhausted those um, points we will then move to this point what what are some of the common problems that face this age group the youth if we are talking about geographical setting if we are talking about experience if we are talking about because you need to live long to have more experience so if we are talking about experience here then I suppose people within this age group face some problems or they face certain situations to to vex them more to make them grow okay out of that because you're talking about moving from one stage to adulthood that youthful stage to adulthood so it is assumed that you go through a stage and you amass certain experiences before you move from that stage to the other stage yeah. so do we face some problems or situations during this stage yeah. the youthful stage yes i yes. believe we face a number of problems for one um, a, one problem i have noticed usually arises during the latter ages of being a teenager you you tend to think that you know a lot and oh. so therefore nobody can get in your business and so you know, you feel so on top of the world, you know. Sometimes it becomes a problem when an elderly person is talking to you, an older person is talking to you, you feel, you know, why is this person bothering me so much? Mm. Then also peer pressure also, you know, you have peer pressure just around that same time, you know, you, latter parts of teenage and youth, you know, and okay. then being accepted socially, you know, that's a time that you think you need to get hooked up or get someone you can call your own someone you can count on you know as like a girlfriend or a boyfriend these oh, okay. are some of the problems that arise in this Stage. age bracket okay yeah. um yes mr mr raffle to join well, i think at this stage it is characterized by some attitudes and some lifestyles which they hardly don't cannot determine how it came in but then i think it's a natural thing because at that age you see adventure setting into their life oh um, you can have people who do things which they normally were not doing before that age um i was talking to one peer a uh, one peer and she was like at age 14 let me say she had pubic hairs under her armpit and she she was playing and then she said she could remember what she was wearing one sleeveless and a gentleman said like hey you're growing you have hairs under her armpit and she was like why do you say such thing? Annoyed. So we they are sensitive. Thank you. During this stage. Yes. Oh, well, too soon, um, precious listener. We've come to the end of today's program. It's uh, rather unfortunate we couldn't exhaust all the points that we wanted to. But then we'll meet you same time next week. Please stay blessed.
You can contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu. Dot edu dot gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030-7051-058. The number again, Truth is presented with precision and exactness. Enjoy this encounter of a lifetime. You are welcome to the moment of truth. We're going to talk about work and i've captioned today's sermon work a blessing not a curse if you have your bible with you open with me to the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 15 if you don't have a bible please take a piece of paper and a pen write it down when you go home check it up or read it genesis chapter 2 verse 15 and the lord god took the man and put him in the garden of eden to work it and take care of it 
I'm reading from the New International Version. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings of work. May we have that desire to work so that the purpose for which you gave work to mankind will be accomplished in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Work, a blessing, not a curse. What is the Bible teaching with regards to work? How do you see work? Is it a blessing or a curse? A prominent writer has written, Notwithstanding all that has been said and written regarding the dignity of manual work, the feeling prevails that it is degrading. Popular opinion has, in many minds, changed the order of things, and men have come to think that it is not fitting for a man who works with his hands to take his place among gentlemen. According to the Oxford Dictionary, work is the use of bodily or mental power to do or make something. A thing to be undertaken or a thing done or produced by work. As you read from Genesis chapter 2, let's read verses 8 and 15. The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. Let us impress upon the minds the fact that labor is noble, that it was ordained to man of heaven, that it was enjoined upon Adam in Eden as an essential to the healthy development of mind and body. Work is a blessing, not a curse. In Genesis 3.17, the Bible tells us that then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. This is from the New King James Version. Friends, work is a blessing. Even after man sinned, God told Adam that for his sake he has cursed the ground, so that he can work, toil, and eat from his labor. For it was God's purpose to alleviate by toil the evil brought into the world by man's disobedience. So God actually gave us work, increased the toil of work, so that in our sinful state, in our fallen condition, we can better meet temptations to evil, or we can better be fit to face temptation and to conquer, if possible. Work is a blessing. And the life of toil and care, which was henceforth to be man's lot, was appointed in love. It was a discipline rendered needful by his sin. To place a check upon the indulgence of appetite and passion, to develop habits of self-control, it was a part of God's great plan for man's recovery from the ruin and degradation of sin. Work is a blessing, not a curse. In Ministry of Healing, page 177, it's written, An occupation of mind and body in useful work is essential as a safeguard against temptation. Work is a blessing, not a curse. In Psalm 114, verse 23, the psalmist says, Then man goes out to his work, to his labor until evening. Work is a blessing. In Proverbs 31, talking about the virtuous woman, in verse 17, it is written, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. Dear friend, work is a blessing. This virtuous woman who does her work vigorously is regarded as doing something good, as a blessing to even the husband and the family. In Second Thessalonians 3, 10 to 13, Paul says, For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. For we hear that some among you are idle. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. Friends, Paul admonished the church in Thessalonica that those who are idle, those who are lazy, those who are not working with their hands, those who want to depend on other people, but who are strong and healthy, are not wealthy to eat. It's a Christian principle. Paul says it is a rule. Friend, you need to work because work is a blessing. My prayer is that 
you work with your hands. You work. Use your brain, your hand, everything God has given you, your talent, your body, everything to work and depend on your work. Work to feed yourself. Work to even help other people. Work because work is a blessing, not a curse. Dear one, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of work that you appointed it for us so that we can work and work harder. And even the evils of temptation can be dealt with with this work attitude. Thank you and we bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear one, this is Pastor John Apia, a lecturer at Valley View University. This is the first series of work, not a curse, it's a blessing. We will do the second series next time. God bless you. Our address, Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box, AF595, Adenta, Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 030 058. The number again, 030-7051-058. I am blessed being a part of this program. Hannah, what about you? The same here. So I believe, listener, you did too. This has been once again, Kwejo and Sendu. And Hannah B. Nyaku. God, God bless, bless you. you.